Hey everybody, um, it's Andrew. I haven't done a video in a while. I've been stockpiling them. Um, had a couple cool glory stories um, this past weekend, so I wanted to just share those um, with you guys. Um, the first one, um, about a month ago, uh, I'm at a Saturday mass um, here in Fort Worth at Holy Family, and one of the gentlemen who does kind of the uh, housekeeping and groundskeeping around the parish. Um, I just noticed he was, he had a really hard time getting around and was limping and um, really kind of slow afoot. And um, yeah, just that kind of that bell went off in my head. Okay, you need to go pray with him. We were the only two people in the church. So on my way out, I just just said, Hey, can I, can, uh, you know, we know each other, but I just said, Hey, um, do you mind if I pray over you? I notice you're having a hard time getting around and he's, you know, kind of explaining, you know, um, used to, I think power lift and kind of do some aggressive exercise and just kind of the effects of that and physical labor is just taking his toll on his body. And, um, so we just prayed for restoration and healing for that. And he was like extremely, receptive and um you know it was a good good interaction um i see him uh this this saturday about a month later um and first time seeing him since then and and you know i was gonna walk out the church on this one side but i knew that if i walked out that side that the door would be unlocked behind me because you got to unlock the door to get out so so i kind of turned around and went back out the other way and was like, well, this, this way, the door will lock behind me if I go out this door. So, um, as I'm leaving that door, I see, um, I see Jim and I, and I kind of give him a, uh, a wave and, and he kind of looks at me and smiles and his face is lit up. And, um, I asked him how he's doing and he's like, uh, you know, your prayer worked. I'm, I'm, I'm healed, uh, no pain. And I, and I can walk now and everything's fine. And, and, uh, he just had this like sparkle in his eye and this glow and, um, I was like, wait, for real? Um, like something really happened. And, uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, man, it's completely gone. I'm walking around. I'm in no pain. Everything's good. And I was kind of in disbelief, but, but I was just like, well, you know, let's just pray again. Like just thank and praise the Lord for his goodness. Um, so we did that and, and, you know, I left, but, um, just a really cool, you know, I thought nothing of, of that interaction, you know, well, I know God can heal people, but I was just like, there was nothing special about it. But, um, after seeing him the second time, like something, it was special. So, um, yeah, just want to give that glory story to encourage and give testimony to, um, you know, pray until something happens, keep praying, even though you're not seeing something, um, something's always happening. And, and, um, yeah, just, just be obedient in that faith and willing to just have that boldness and, you know, ask people if they want to pray because God might want to do something. So um, that's the first story. The second story, um, I got to remember. Okay, so um, that was on Saturday, yesterday morning. So in the afternoon, I go to Adoration. And, and if anybody's seen the Fearless documentary and kind of this, uh, the way they go about things in the Encounter Ministry School, um, started by Father Matthias Thielen, they, a lot of times they'll go into adoration and just ask the Lord, who do you want me to minister today? Who do you want me to evangelize? Like what type of encounters do you want me to have with, with random people? You know, can you give me a location where I can go? Can you give me a name or something specific about them that they need prayer for a word of knowledge that might, um, speak to them that, that then opens the door for maybe, you know, sharing Jesus with them. So, I had the strong desire to do this. I had no other agenda yesterday. And I was like, I want to, I want to do this. Like, you know, I was just really just lit up to do it. And so I'm in adoration before I leave, I'm, I'm asking the Lord. And I felt like he said, like, I saw like a French flag, like the French flag. And, and then I was like, like, what's that mean? You know, I asked myself, what's that mean? And, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said like French restaurant. And then, um, and then I saw, thought I saw like an interstate sign and there's an interstate that goes through Fort Worth here called Interstate 35. And I'm like, okay, like maybe that's like the location, maybe the, the French restaurants near that interstate. So I'll, so I'll look on the map for something like that. And I was like, well, who am I going to meet there, Lord? And 
he said, Dave. And I was like, okay, a guy named Dave at a French restaurant off 35. Like, what am I going to tell him? And the Lord said, um, my left hand was pierced for him. And, you know, I've gotten words of knowledge before. Um, sometimes you're like, oh, was that me? Was that God? These were like average level certainty. And a lot of times average level certainty ended up, ends up being like spot on, which I've known just from practicing, you know, stepping out and sharing things with people and just seeing like, okay, was that me or was that God? Well, you don't know unless you tell the person or you go find the person or you say it. Um, again, that obedience and faith, like, I don't care if I'm wrong or what I look like, like I'm going to be obedient to what God's, what I think God's telling me. And, um, so I go, I look up this Fred's restaurant. It's like a food truck catering thing by, by interstate 35. It ain't even there. That's not even in, like in existence. So, okay. Oh, for one. Then I pull up to this, the next one that's closest to 35. I pull in that it's like four 30 in the afternoon and that one's like dinner only starting at 5 30. So I'm like, I'm talking to the guy, the owner at the front. And I'm like, Hey, what's, what's your name? <laughs> he's like, Chris. So I was like, okay, it ain't Dave. I was like, is anybody here named Dave? And he's like, no, not that I know of. Okay. Strike two. Um, then I, then like the, this, these other couple places are closed. So then like the only other French place I know is like this, like basically like the McDonald's version of French food here in Fort Worth. It's called La, La Madeleine. And I pull in there. There's like nobody there. I'm like preparing as I'm driving there. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to walk in and be like, who here is named Dave? I got something for you. But I walk in, there's like nobody there. And so I order some food and sit down and slowly some people start to trickle in. It's getting closer to five o'clock now. So dinner rolling around and, and, uh, I just started asking people, I'm like, you know, acting like I'm going to the bathroom, acting like I'm refilling my water. And I'm just going up to all these random tables like, Hey, I'm looking for a guy named Dave. Are, are you him? And it's like, Nope, Nope, Nope. Like, so I'm sitting here thinking, all right, I'm striking out. And, um, I'm just like, people start rolling in and I'm like, dang Lord, do I really got to ask all these people if their name's Dave? And I was ready to, and I was like, Lord, just give me somebody with a name tag or something, you know? And, um, I'm almost like kind of giving up on this, like thinking that, okay, it was just me in adoration. Like it wasn't the Holy spirit. And I like turn around behind me and there's this Hispanic guy sitting with these two women. And I'm like, looking at him, I'm like, well, he, his name ain't Dave. Like his name is probably, you know, some, something more common for Hispanic people. Like Dave's I'm, Dave, I'm looking for a middle-aged white guy. And, um, I just go up to their table and I'm like, Hey, is your name Dave? I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to meet a guy named Dave here. And he's like, he kind of looks at me. He's like, no, my, my name's Caesar. Um, and I'm like, okay, sorry to bother you. And I start to walk away and he's like, hold on. Um, I got a text yesterday from someone that was asking the same question. And this woman texted me, she had the wrong number, but she said, Hey, Hey Dave, you know, I need you to file these papers, you know, something business related. And he responded to her, you know, this is not Dave. You got the wrong number. And she said, well, God bless you. Thank you. Sorry for bothering you. And so he tells me that story and he's like, well, maybe God's trying to tell me something. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, that kind of sounds like a maybe. Um, so I said, I asked him if I can sit down and I'm just trying to, you know, kind of look into the situation more. And, um, he said, you know, I've went through a, a really tough time in my life the last, last couple of months. And I've just been praying to the Lord, Lord, do not forget me. Lord, do not forget me. And well, I said, I don't know if this message is for you because you're not Dave, but we kind of have this Dave story connection with this name. And, you know, I, I feel like the Lord wants me to tell you that his left hand was pierced for you. Um, and even if you were the only person on the earth, he would have still died for you, um, because he, you matter to him and he loves you. Um, he loves you that much. And, um, they were all Christians at the table, but they were just kind of all looking at me. I was like, yeah, I was in prayer this morning and I was asking for somebody, the Lord that, that could, um, that could help me if he could send me to somebody to share you with, to share Jesus with, um, you know, I just was asking him, you know, where do I go and who is it? And I wound up here looking for a Dave and, and, you know, they were all very intrigued by this, but, but not like doubting. 
And, you know, he explained like how the Lord basically put these two women in his life um, when he was depressed and was suicidal. And um, they helped like, you know, give him friendship and carry him, him, him along. And then now, now I come along with that message. So um, we just prayed like protection and just, um, you know, we just prayed together and um, just petitioned the Lord for, for just more of his Holy Spirit and for his love to just rain down on us and for him to just love on us until we believe him more. Um, but anyways, that was like a really cool interaction. Um, this is similar to a lot of other interactions I've had. It's like I got four wheels on my car, but one tire is flat. And I got to keep practicing and stepping out in faith um, because like the words of knowledge and some of the maybe prophetic gifts, um, they're not like r clicking on all cylinders, you know, riding smoothly. Like, it's like, I got one flat tire, like, okay, like you got the guy's name wrong, but it was like kind of connected to him. Um, you know, it'd have been cool if I would have got the name Caesar in, in, in adoration, but, um, I'm thankful and God is good. And, you know, I just encourage you guys to just practice this for yourselves, practice this with other people. Um, you know, one thing about the prophetic gifts and hearing God's voice, um, is it is necessary for our own prayer life because you can't really have like, how good is your prayer life? If you can't hear God's voice, then you're just like telling him what you want the whole time. And you're just like kind of whining or complaining or petitioning him. Um, when do you ever receive what he has to say? And how can you truly read scripture and let the, not only the logos, what you're reading, but the rhema, how it specifically applies to you. How can you receive that without, um, being able to hear his voice. So we have to practice these things and practice hearing, well, Lord, what do you want to say to me through this? What do you want to me to say? What do you want to say to me about this person, you know, or this situation? Um, and then once we're able to practice that in our own prayer life, then we can practice it for other people. Um, so it is, it is, uh, I think vital to, uh, to our faith and our walk to practice these things. And we all know by our, as Catholics, we believe by our baptism, we are priest, prophet, and king. So that, that office of prophecy, we have to practice it um, and step out in faith and practice it. Um, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11 says that. So um, I just want to encourage everybody to keep going, keep listening to Father Alex and Peggy and all the stuff that's going on at St. Vincent's. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys are having a good day. God bless everyone. All right.